this is Darren at Moonhouse Studio and today we're going to install the Qcom Pro XS to the Qcom Pro X and see how we get on. I'm going to try it just from scratch and see how it all boots up and then if there's any issues with that we'll start working through them one by one. So let's have a look first at the actual physical connections. Right, so the standard way to plug your Qcon Pro XS into your Qcon Pro X is just to take a USB out, and there's only one socket on the back there, and just plug it into one of the ports on the back here. So I've got it in number one here. It doesn't actually matter which one you put it in. But just bear in mind that this is only a, a hub. It's a USB hub built into the icon itself. So if you're having problems with the extender disconnecting or giving you sort of real issues and some people have had this happen then just do away with this you don't have to connect it into the Qcon Pro X at all and just plug a USB cable direct from your extender into a hub or direct into your um, computer and that will work in exactly the same way and potentially there's less risk of it actually falling over. Now one thing I noticed when I tried this out earlier on today is that um, my Qcon was one of these ones that uh, kind of wobbles about a bit and I put a washer on there to sort that out. You can see that in a previous video. Um, but when you use these little, for want of a better word, noggins, I don't know what, the, what you'd call them, um, just to slot into the sides here, that's to lock the two units together. So I'll just slide that across and now it's it's stable <laughs> so I've actually cured problem with the uh, Qcon Pro X by adding the extender but anyway we're connected up at the back the USBs are connected direct into my hub I haven't bothered to go through and chain them together um, the power supplies are linked in the back there and we're ready to turn on so I'm going to power on and the display says that it's expansion unit one. You notice these buttons are here, they're lit up, so you can actually change the expansion unit depending on how many you've got, but that's fine. You can just select it if you want or just let it go. It's uh, saying it's Logic Pro. I'm on Cubase, so I'm going to have to tab back. Yeah, and there's Cubase, but you've got lots of different um, stores that you can choose here. So anyway, let's go back to Cubase. I can select it or I can just leave it and Cubase mode is selected. Um, it's down on here as channels 1 to 8 which is fine. The Qcon as Pro X is as powered up as Cubase which is what I normally have it on but it is also saying channels 1 to 8. That's um, a little irritating to my mind I want that to be the correct channel so we're going to have to sort that out. So when the Qcon Pro X powers up it says there's no Qcon Pro X unit so we're going to have to select one unit. If you've got it in this arrangement here you want it to know that the, um, the extender is there and it's attached to your Qcon so make sure you do that first. So I know I've said in previous videos that I think this LCD strip is a little bit of a waste of time but at least now with those settings we've got channels 1 to 8 on the extender and channels 9 through to 16 on the Qcon Pro X so that makes sense. So when you've got your uh, Qcon extender set up in this configuration so the extenders first so you've got all of your channels in one bank and then the Qcon Pro X over here it's a slightly different setup to if you have it the other way around so let's do this one I've got uh, a template loaded up which just has some um, mono channels in 1 to 16 so we can see what we're doing we're going to go up into studio studio setup and we're going to need to add two remote devices. We need the controller for the extender and the original board. So we'll add a Mackie controller, we'll add another one. And then in this configuration, the first one is the Qcon Pro X. So go up into your MIDI output, connect that up um, to your inputs and outputs up there and click apply. 
and you can see that the faders have moved so it's picked it up. Mac in control 2 then is the extender so we go to the extender there click on that apply and that's moved and that means we're all set up so we've got channels 1 to 8 here 9 to 16 here and if I just cancel that out um, you can see that these faders are controlling these here and these ones are controlling those channels over there so that's all fine so what about the other way round? let's take a look at that right so in this configuration we've got the QCOM Pro X here and the extender boards are after it now slightly different setup here because we've had to select this as controller 2 otherwise these channels read 1 to 8 along here as well as the 1 to 8 along here on the QCOM Pro X we don't actually select that it's got an extender because if we if we select extender then it will automatically renumber these channels 9 to 16 if we said there were two extenders then it would be 17 to 24 it really makes no difference to the operation of the units it's just whether you want to see the channels displayed correctly along this strip which you know does it matter probably not okay so we've got the same project set up here but this time we're going to have to do a slightly different configuration when we go into our studio setup we're going to again um, you know if you haven't already got them there add your two Mackie controllers but in this instance Mackie controller one is going to be the extender and Mackie controller two and we can see the extenders picked up there is going to be the main QCON Pro X and I apply that and that's picked up there and um, if we just OK that we can see again this is controlling correctly now the uh, extender has got these channels over here and the main board is using these channels over here so that's the basic process um, I hope that's been useful just remember that depending on your setup you will have to change the um, extender or the icon uh, QCOM Pro X um, settings when they boot up and the extenders actually tend to hold all the information but what you'll find with the QCOM Pro X is that if you need to say that it's got one extender on you're gonna to have to do that every time you are gonna to have to click on that button to say it's got an extender or two or three otherwise it just won't read that LCD strip correctly um, but it's no actual problem from the physical working of the desk as long as you're set up in Cubase you'll be fine right so that's it for today um, if you're into like and subscribe that's fine have a have a little um, look at other videos that I've done as well I've got lots of content there but I don't expect it of people because there's there's some really fantastic channels out there that are probably um, you know burning a hole in your YouTube inbox so um, uh, until next time have a great time making music and I'll see you on the next one